Reality NXT presents Let's Talk Business series where we talk about different verticals of real estate with industry experts to deep dive into the current trend and explore future possibilities. This series is sponsored by Totality. Totality keeps you hooked with all progress updates around your sales and marketing, providing 100% automation to realtors. So thank you, Mr. Harshwadhan, for joining us today on Reality NXT for the Let's Talk Business series. Thank you. So I really want to know how would you summarize 2020 for the Neota Group? Well, I suppose anyone in the field of hospitality and real estate has done 20. Not that it was easier a few years before that. Also, I think we've had a tough period generally over the last for years and obviously 2020 was uh, uh, was naturally worst because uh, hospitality was of course the frontline sector that got the brunt of it and real estate too initially we were very concerned as to whether the demand would come back whether people would be able to pay their installments because of large dislocation in business etc but Thankfully, last few months, we are seeing a pickup. So that's been a little bit of a silver lining. That's great. So uh, recently, Amuja Nyuta Group had signed a major development deal with Satya Homes to develop a 72-acre township project in Kolkata. So please tell us more about this project. Well, it's in the outskirts of Kolkata. There is a township of Rajarhat, which is very popular. This is just in the fringe of Rajarhat. Mm. Uh, it belonged to a friend of mine who had this property and was looking to find a co-developer to do it. So we found the project interesting and uh, so we have stepped in. HDFC is also associated in it and uh, we are in the process of finalizing the designs etc. I think in the next two three months hopefully if we have all the permissions in hand, we should be able to start. That's great. And also last year, you had partnered with the Taj Group to launch, I think, three hotels. Two were in Kolkata and one in partner, uh, Patna. So what was the idea behind this partnership? Well, it's not a partnership. It's a management contract. They will run up hmm. as like they manage many other hotels for many different people. Uh, <clears throat> In Calcutta, one of the hotels was the erstwhile Swiss Hotel, which we had a 10-year contract that got over in June. Okay. And, uh, because it was in the middle of the pandemic, mm. we were not able to sign up another arrangement till only a few months ago. Mm. So, uh, and now we are refurbishing it because uh, it has to be slightly upgraded to Taj standards. So. Mm. In a few months, that will open. We opened our first Taj Hotel at uh, Makaibari Tea Garden, which is in Darjeeling. Uh, that opened its doors just uh, a month ago, actually in middle of December. Right. So, um, so that's the first Taj Hotel from uh, with our association. We have another up in the hills in Gangtok in Sikkim which right. is under construction. So hopefully sometime later next year uh, or yeah, thereabouts, we should open that. And then we have other properties as we discussed in Calcutta and in Patna. So mm -hmm. I think we have our hands full on the hospitality side. True. So as you quoted before also, you know, we have noticed currently still hospitality sector is still struggling a little because of the uh, pandemic. So what do you think, you know, what would you predict for this particular sector for 2021? How hospitality will uh, be for this particular year? So I think uh, in the second half of 2021, we should start coming back to 1919, uh, 2019 levels. Mm -hmm. uh, because another six months, I think it will take for us to uh, really normalize whether it's flight operations or you know, vaccination drive is going on. So gradually, of course, things are opening up and people are 
uh, traveling, but not so much. Right. And, um, I think the leisure properties have picked up. People have been cooped up at home, so uh, and they can't travel abroad. So a lot of people are going to Indian leisure destinations. So that has shown a very healthy recovery. Hmm. But the business hotels are still uh, not doing too well, and I think uh, it will require at least six months before uh, we should hope that things will come back. Of course, uh, there is a question whether it will come back the same way because people have got used to some digital level of communication, interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, my own feeling is that a lot will come back because I think there's clearly a, if I may call it, Zoom fatigue. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's never the same thing like meeting people and having a cup of tea on the sidelines of a conference. I think... Uh, uh, this form of engagement, though very efficient, uh, is not the same thing. And I think people, uh, human beings crave uh, social interaction. They crave meeting other people. At the moment, they are restrained from it because of health reasons. Yeah. But no sooner that this problem is over, mm. I think uh, people will generally want to do that again. So maybe if it is not coming back fully, it mm. will come back largely. Lots of weddings have been postponed. I know many of my friends' children uh, who postponed their weddings uh, because they didn't want to do it in these circumstances when they couldn't invite their friends and family, etc. Yeah. So I think social uh, engagements in hotels will be fairly high mm. the next year. So we noticed during pandemic, you know, very few luxury holiday home rental network has started seeing a demand in India. So what's your take when it comes to holiday rental homes? Do you think we could observe a different trend in this particular sector? So, see, there are two things. Uh, rental homes is also one category, which is in the cities also. Right. That has not been so popular because the return has been somewhat low. And sometimes people feel that they give it to somebody, they may not keep the apartment in good shape or they might uh, not release it when they need it, etc, etc. Yeah. But now the regulatory side, the maintenance side have all become so much more professional mm. that those fears are gradually abating and people are happy to give their apartments on board. On the rental in leisure destinations, that is a new category. I mean, it's not as though people didn't have holiday homes, but usually they were bought out. Yeah. But now people are looking to hire out places. And a lot of people who have these properties are giving it to an Airbnb kind of an operation or an OYO, or for mm -hmm. that matter, any other, so many others are there. Mm -hmm. There's a very new kind of thing called AMA, which has been set up by Taj Hotels. Of course, yeah. that's at the luxury end where the rooms are all pretty expensive, but they also take up independent bungalows mm. and uh, give them out for uh, the families to stay. And in this pandemic time, a lot of people have opted to go there and because you have to work from home anyway, so you might as yeah. well uh, be in a place that you'd like to go to. Uh, so this has worked very well. Obviously, it will come down the demand once uh, things come back to normal and people are able to travel mm. across the world. I mean, uh, it won't be the same, but I think generally one has seen that there is a rise in that kind of demand. Sure. So in the recent report, uh, which we got from Knight Frank, we have noticed that housing sales fell 37% uh, year on year during 2020 calendar year, while gross office uh, space leasing declined 35% on low demand because of the pandemic. But of course, the demand improved you know, improved in the last quarter to cross pre-COVID level. So what do you think how Kolkata residential and commercial market would uh, pan out in 2021? If I knew the answer very accurately, I'd be, and if, if it all worked like that, I'd be a very rich person. But you know, <laughs> it's not easy to guess uh, and it's not safe to do that. But what I would feel is that many things have happened. For instance, on the residential front, the mm. initiatives of the government 
like lower interest rates, uh, some uh, schemes on affordable housing for uh, income tax rebate, etc. Right. Mm -hmm. All of this has definitely made housing very affordable. Also, the builders have had a very tough period last few years. Yeah. First, regulatory side, Urera, before that, GST. Then they had the NBFC crisis, so liquidity got dried up. Mm. Then, of course, we had COVID. So there was a series of things that happened which impacted builders, and therefore prices haven't moved up. Mm. So today, I can say fairly certainly that for Calcutta and markets that I operate in, that the price is pretty much bottomed out. Mm. And also, a lot of new supplies didn't come because people just didn't find them viable to, to do it. Mm. So I think going forward, there is a possibility of high prices firming up. Uh, that means going upwards. And therefore, I feel that demand will now start kicking in. Of course, there is still distress in some parts of the economy, uh, in the services sector, in the unorganized sector, etc. So uh, that will also have a little bit of a dampening effect in right. some types of uh, real estate. But uh, overall, I feel that it's positive. Mm -hmm. One thing I have seen also is that for under construction apartments, people are very concerned about who the builder is. True. Uh, they were always concerned, but they have, they have become more concerned now because mm -hmm. many of them invested in projects that got delayed or wasn't built up to expectation, etc. So uh, I think uh, good builders with good track record, with uh, you know having a, a sort of interesting projects, well priced, I think should find a good off take. True. So branded developers definitely is now the customer's uh, demand. I would say in the sense because due to pandemic, they are more now interested to be a part of a branded developer project rather than save money and be with someone un unknown because you would ne never know when you would get the project or you would never know what kind of amenities are promised right now would be delivered. So this is a trend which we also noticed uh, after the pandemic or post pandemic, people are more going towards the inventories which are under branded developers. So would you say in commercial, uh, particularly co-working sector, would you say it will see a good growth in 2021? Yes, uh, well, commercial will grow certainly, but not so fast because you see people, a lot of IT offices are still pretty empty. Yeah. People are still working from home. Now, one thing I hear that a lot of people want to now come back to work because it's becoming very difficult to work from home and the atmosphere and the camaraderie of being with colleagues, etc., is missing. The magic of enjoying your, uh, your work is missing. But then, uh, typically our offices were fairly dense. You know, we had a lot of people sitting next to each other. Yeah. So maybe the people will now want to space the offices out and maybe give a little more room for mm -hmm. people to sit. If that is so, then maybe there's the need for more space also. Uh, so this is a little bit up in the air at the moment. Will mm -hmm. people say, okay, half the people should come to work and the other half should work from home an alternative week. And mm -hmm. then, you know, you sit on alternative chairs so that there's more distance. I don't know. I mean, everyone will have to figure out how they want to do it. Uh, but my sense is that in, may not be in 21, but in the short run, office spaces will have a very positive demand. Okay. So uh, globally, because of the technology boom, uh, we are seeing a decline in average age of the first home buyers or the, you know, as well as the luxury home buyers. So is India witnessing a similar kind of trend? What's your take on this? And what is exactly triggering this trend according to you? So the millennials, because I have children who are millennials, so uh, I have a little peek into that. Uh, they were generally a little nomadic. 
Yeah. And they didn't quite like the idea of getting saddled with real estate and then looking after it, etc. They just were a little bit more avant-garde, if I may use the word, wanting to explore the world, have a job here, have a job there, you know, uh, not necessarily be rooted like many of us in our generation wanted uh, to be. So in that sense, there was a little lack of interest in buying houses. Mm. But the pandemic has, uh, funnily enough, turned this uh, quite significantly. Today, the same millennials are saying, Ek to ghar hona chahiye kahi na kahi. Yeah. Uh, Because, you know, they <laughs> suddenly realize that yeah, at least I have to have one place that I can call home. And I can, you know, go to when I need to go to. Hmm. So I think uh, because of this root shock of the pandemic, hmm. uh, what I thought should have been a natural instinct for most people to at least have one home uh, is now rekindled. I was thinking that in between, there was a feeling that maybe people are saying, you know, this whole business of managing real estate is too much. You just avoid it. We we'll rent it out and if we don't uh, want to stay there and want to go to another city, we leave the rent and go somewhere else. Yeah. But now I think that is slightly changed. May not be for everyone, mm. but uh, for, for at least a good number of them. And therefore the age profile may fall uh, as, as we see. Mm. Okay. So uh, which technology uh, that you think is focusing more on commercial real estate that have emerged as one of your favorite in the last few years. What technology you mean? So any particular technology which you think in commercial real estate has emerged and has, it can be anything from artificial intelligence, from the contactless technology, from blockchain. Has there been any particular technology that has been your favorite in the last few years? Talking to the wrong person, I'm not really technologically very savvy. <laughs> Okay. more a uh, person into brick and mortar kind of a uh, little bit relatively old school but having said that no no particular one thing we have seen through the pandemic is that technology has been far more used than it ever was uh, both yeah. to communicate and to interact with customers and to deliver services hmm. and I think uh, a lot of it is here to stay even after the pandemic is over Definitely. So is there any upcoming projects specifically in the retail sector from your side? Any upcoming project? Yes, we have a large uh, mall coming up in the city of Patna. Okay. Nearing completion. It's, uh, I think in a few months we should be able to hand over to the people for fit outs. Mm -hmm. And we are looking at uh, pre-Diwali opening. Great. So is there anything you have noticed in from your side, what kind of trend has it been in Kolkata or in Patna market when it comes to malls, how the footfall still has been? Like a lot of uh, people still in um, Maharashtra is facing a bit of problem when it comes to footfalls. So what is your take on this and what kind of uh, you know trend have you observed in this particular sector? So footfalls in general have been around 50% of I mean, at the moment, mm -hmm. to 60% of last year. So in the same month, same time last year, uh, if you had 100 people, you have somewhere around 60 people in the mall. Yeah. What is good is that it is, doesn't mean the sales are 60%. The sales are almost 85%. Uh, that's because people who used to come up, uh, out to the malls to just hang out have reduced. Those yeah. who come for shopping have, are still coming. Uh, and those who come to, say, eat in the restaurants are still coming because our restaurant sales are also around 85 to 90 percent of last year now. Hmm. So the only thing is people are not just coming for the sake of coming and, you know, you, you've got some time to kill. Many people would go to the mall now. They prefer to avoid going to crowded places just because you want to limit your exposure. Right. So this is there. I think uh, once the vaccine process is over and everyone is vaccinated, mm. which I think will should happen in a large measure by 
uh, next six to eight months, uh, then I think uh, we, we should. I think this time next year, we should be certainly doing very well. Okay, so when it comes to private equity investment in Indian retail sector, which we noticed in 2019 was approx um, 968 million dollars, the highest between 2015 to 2020. This sector was one of the worst affected due to COVID pandemic. Do you think the private equity investment into Indian retail uh, real estate likely to bounce back in 2021? We have to see pandemic as a one is a black swan event that happens one in a once in a lifetime. Yeah. Maybe once in many lifetimes actually. So uh, I don't think any serious investor will look at the damage caused during this particular pandemic hmm. to be indicative of how the world will move. I mean, one will have to take fundamental decisions. Will people actually go to malls or will they go to online shopping? As we all know, online shopping has had a very steep increase. Yeah. But it has happened to one large extent is because other options were closed. And the other, obviously, the reason is that it was safer and more convenient. True. Yeah. Now, convenience will continue to remain in the future, but mm -hmm. safety may not be an issue tomorrow. And things remaining closed may not be true tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So if two out of the three reasons by which you opt for online shopping have gone, mm -hmm. then that still remains one reason only. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I think by its nature, there are some products or many products where it's nothing like seeing it and buying it. And mm -hmm. I think that feel of people to enjoy that process of shopping mm -hmm. uh, and meeting friends and going and enjoying the buzz of a public space is a very important part of someone's social calendar or his day, uh, you know, at least his recreational life. So uh, my sense is that it is here to stay. So I've been following your journey and this is something personally I wanted to ask. It's quite inspiring. So who has been your role model? Who has inspired you to uh, create such a visionary plan from the beginning till now? No, no, see, <laughs> I may get a lot of credit for things that have happened by chance. Uh, frankly, I didn't have any such grand plan. I had, I just wanted to do what I could do to the best of my ability. And uh, not that everything that I did uh, turned out well. Some things were better than expected and some things were not as good as expected. And that is true for everyone's life. So my life is nothing particularly unique in that sense. Uh, from an inspiration point of view, obviously, uh, I have to credit a large part of whatever I am, which includes what I'm, what I'm not good at, uh, I think, to uh, my family and to the surroundings and the people that I grew up with, the people, uh, not just my family alone, but also the influences I had. I lived in a joint family. I had you know, our home was an open home. We had people coming in and out from all different walks of life. So I think I grew up in a very rich milieu of, of uh, highly uh, creative people uh, sort of moving in and out of my home. So I, I had the opportunity of growing up in that kind of a milieu. Uh, I had little to do for it. I just was born in that home. So I was lucky to be part of this situation. And uh, I'm sure uh, a lot of things that bored me to death when I was a kid mm. must have uh, sort of sunk into the head somewhere. And uh, they are manifesting itself in some of the work that I do now, mm. which maybe I didn't realize uh, at that particular point of time. So that is one part of it. Uh, on a more philosophical sense, I have been a great follower of the works of Vivekananda, of uh, Gandhiji and of Tagore in particular. I have had the opportunity to read their works extensively and they have been extremely inspirational to me. So, 
these are greatly benefit different aspects of life. And then, of course, on a daily basis, even now, my kids are my inspiration. They are a totally different generation. And it's very interesting because their perspective of the world is very different. But it's an engaging kind of a interaction mm -hmm. with them uh, very often, which is not always very agreeable, mm -hmm. but certainly uh, very thought-provoking. I'm sure. So, uh, apart from, you know, interaction with your kids, what is the other things which make you updated with the, you know, evolving technology or time or even your sector wise? Because why I was calling a visionary? Because from retail to real estate to hospitality, there has been a proper structural plan going ahead with the Nyota group. So how you keep yourself evolved with the time? So I said, you know, sometimes when some things fall in place, uh, there is a, a lot of uh, credit you get for things that actually happen without any such uh, blueprint, frankly speaking. It, you know, it was yeah. like whatever opportunity came, uh, there were only a few things that I told myself. Let us try to do the best we can. Let's be sincere in what we do and let's try and honor the promises we made. It's very simple things like that. Nothing, nothing very earth shattering. And I don't think I was doing anything that any other businessman would perhaps not be doing because it's a simple thing. You, you make a promise, you should honor it. You should do your best. I don't think that's a very earth shattering thing. And you mm -hmm. should be, try and be hardworking and sincere. So this is all that I did. Uh, certain, as I said, some things fell in place. I think a lot of blessings, a lot of, uh, may I call it, uh, being at the right time, at the right place, maybe for the right thing. And if some ideas did come in, like mm -hmm. in form of design or in form of a particular kind of way we conceptualize a product, it was really a teamwork. You know, you had architects involved, you had your colleagues involved. I personally don't think that I drove everything. I mean, naturally, the buck stops with me, so I had to take the final decision. Yeah. But uh, ideas came from various different people. I was fortunate that very capable, very interesting people came in to this, uh, uh, into this uh, group. And uh, everyone contributed. Uh, some good ideas struck and certain things worked. It's actually quite simple as that. You're being quite humble, I would say. But where do you see your group, uh, you know, going ahead in next? I know it sounds very, uh, very far, but I'm sure the way you have planned, even the team has helped you around with the plans and execution. Where do you see this group going ahead in three to five years? Expansion wise or even growth wise? So on a lighter note, if you ask me that, will I wake up tomorrow morning? I have to confess that honestly, even you can't answer that question and I can't answer that question because nobody knows what will happen, right? Yeah. So to plan in a very finite sense, I think uh, is a little futile because we don't know about life itself, leave alone about our work. Uh, the only thing one can do is to basically have some ideas and have some values. And I think yeah. we have tried to build an organization where we've defined that this is really what we want to do. How much we will be able to do, how, how, how long it will take. It's very difficult to put uh, exact uh, schedule to it. But yes, if we do something, we will do it with these values. Uh, and hopefully we will not deviate from it. I mean, this is something that we, Pray to God that please don't allow, don't tempt us to deviate from these certain guidelines that we have set for ourselves. And that's what we have to stick to. If we stick to that, the journey would be exciting. And, you know, you'll get somewhere, but I frankly don't think it's important to know where ultimately you will go because you don't know whether you'll actually be there to reach that point. So important thing is that every day when you look out of the window of your moving train, if I may use the word, Hmm. at least you should be enjoy the sunrise and the sunset and see the beautiful scenery and be happy that you know 
you have crossed a thing. Otherwise, you know, you keep focusing on some location you want to reach mm. and the whole journey becomes full of tension. It is not worth it. No, I agree. I completely agree. So basically your uh, mantra is go with the flow. Yeah, what else? I mean, it is not my mantra. I think it is a, it's a mantra for, I suppose, anyone. Uh, not something specific to any one particular individual that you have to what choices what other choice do we have I mean if you really think about it yeah you really don't have another choice and well I'm also not complaining that this is some terrible choice it's a it's a beautiful choice uh, go with the flow like things can things will come some things will not be so good and some things mm. will be good and you just uh, do what you think you can do in the best possible way you can do and hopefully make some friends on the journey. Uh, you know, if, if you can't help anyone, at least don't harm anyone. Yeah. Uh, some basic things like that. Well, that's a great way to put it all together. And for definitely for youngsters also to understand because people who inspire you, inspire you are from the younger generation. They should also understand stress and all that will come with whatever you do and it's very important to you know understand how your journey needs to be and take small breaths or deep breaths to just go with the flow as you said right so it was lovely chatting with you today on reality nxt and we learned more about the market you are expanding in and we are looking forward to have such, such amazing interaction further with you thank you so much Thank you.